but I'm running out of disk space or batteries. Okay, so when you boot in, you know, it, it could load up that, that driver. And so, you know, fortunately, OpenSUSE has that. You can boot in to the terminal. And then from the terminal, you have to enter, enter in certain commands, and you have to have certain tools available to you. And basically, that's the the, the kernel source. And the way to install that from the command line, if you're stuck in there, of course, if you're if you're smart, if you're smart enough, or if you've seen this, uh, you go in and uh, after you've installed your driver, and you install the things that I'm going to read off, or that, are, that appear on that page before you reboot, you're not and, and you and you and you uh, run the command to make the RAM disk, which is uh, making it RD. Uh, you'll be okay. You don't need to do the zipper in thing, but zipper now, SUSE has changed the way that you can, uh, from the command line, uh, install um, software from from the, over the internet uh, three times in my tenure of using it. First it was uh, apt-get, there was a, a port of apt-get called apt-rpm that you can use, so the command lines were the same, apt-get, apt-get update, that worked great up until, I don't know, maybe SUSE 9, they ditched that, there's something called yum, and then now there's something called zipper, Z-Y-P-B-E-R, so in this case you have to do uh, zipper in, kernel source, kernel sim, and you just type what it says there, you know. And I noticed on mine, I wasn't able to, and I'm on a, oh yeah, I have a 64-bit install. So I tried live GCC, no, GLIBC 64-bit and GLIBC develop 64-bit, and that didn't install on mine, but at the end of the day, it wasn't a show so it didn't prevent me from doing what I wanted to. And then uh, you probably could have just added, the guy that wrote this probably could have just put the kernel desktop devel up there with the free type, font, convict, and all, all those things are going to install. Um, but he didn't. I don't know if he had a reason. So anyway, I, I followed his steps. I did two different zipper in commands. And then he tries to cover both 32 and 64. And then, oh yeah, there's one other thing that has to be done before you make your uh, init RD. Now, now, what happens is, another thing, you, oh yeah, there's two... <laughs> Two other things that you have to do after the um, the driver is installed by your your one click. <laughs> See, a one click install is supposed to be that all I do is just click this and everything's just done for me and it great. It doesn't doesn't do that, so that's the danger of using the one click install. It's kind of you know whatever you have whatever your preconceived motion of that is could um, affect your outcome, and it's not just down to you just clicking that. You have to also configure these things. And conceivably, a one-click install could have script commands to do these things for you. In fact, I don't see why the one-click install wouldn't include all these different things. But it doesn't. So whether you use the one-click install or you download their file, uh, ATI's file, and you, you, you run their, their binary driver, whatever you do, when you're done with that, you have to run this ATI config double slash initial. And that puts a few configuration text files here and there, but it doesn't exactly get it right. And what it, what it ends up doing is putting a file in etc. mod probe D called fglrx.com with one line that reads uh, blacklist um, radion. Yeah, no, no big whoop, right? But what it's supposed to be is etc. mod probe 50 slash fglrx.com that I got highlighted there, okay? Then you have to, uh, after that, then you want to make sure that your um, your driver is loaded for your, that ATI has provided. And the driver's called fglrx, actually. And so you, you run dep mod A and slash A, and what that does is probes all your hardware, finds all the drivers that are available for the hardware that you have, and loads those drivers. That's probably a good thing to do if you think you have a problem with one of your drivers. <laughs> and then ld config, if you type that, it 
makes it so that you don't have to do depth mod every time. It just makes those modules uh, permanently available when you boot in. Um, so I, I don't know why this mod pro slash v FGL or X is there, but I know I, I didn't need it. And then there's one last thing you have to do is um, is uh, set you have to edit the file called edit sysconfig kernel and you have to change the line that reads no underscore KMS underscore in underscore in NRD equals uh, yes from no to yes. Okay. Then you type make an NRD and you're you're good after that. You should have no problem booting in except if uh, the kernel the name of the kernel has changed in the boot directory and you're not using grub2. Okay. Uh, if you're using grub1, you might have to update your grub and get it to, to boot to the new name of the, you know, if it's 2623x versus 2622 or whatever, you know, whatever number the kernel is, and that's it. It's all you really need to know. Um, then you then you boot in, but then you still you you, you know you tr and that 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 little control panel up there will work, but you're not getting your wobbly you wheel. Know, what, what's going on here? And I think there may be some options in here where you could say, yeah, go ahead, and give me wobbly windows, blah blah blah. And I think if you do that, it interferes with what you need to do with the KDE control center. And I'll show you why. Okay, so he, okay, so here now to 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 affect the way KDE KDE is an application suite that runs on top of the ability to have a graphical user interface. And um, KDE gives a look of my, you know, my computer. KDE has a look of having the menu over here, having a certain set of icons and a certain set of applications. And the way icons can be added to the desktop, if you right click it, you just get widgets in this case to put an icon to the desktop. You have to go to the application you want and right click on it and say add to the desktop. You can't just make an <laughs> you can't just make an icon, okay? Um, close that. I'm not burning a disk right now. And um, so anyway, to to to, to configure this this KDE environment rather than your entire system, that's what this KDE control panel is for, okay? And uh, under that, to, for the, it's, it's under look and feel and desktop, and it's really under uh, desktop effects. Now I have my desktop effects enabled, but it's saying composting, that's a very poor choice of words, because until I saw this word composting in this box, I didn't know that, that had anything to do with my wobbly windows, and there were times where I was doing searches for wobbly windows, and I saw the word composting come up, and I I bypassed it. Okay, that just again, I'm just gonna say what my opinion is. And, you know, yeah, there's no need to argue about it. It's an opinion, you know, and it has been an opinion. It could be wrong. So I'm gonna say I want to resume composting, but right now I'm finding out that I'm having to do that every time. I log in. I don't want to have to do that right now. I see there. Okay, so now I got that. Now I got my Wally Windows. And then if I close something like that, it'll burst into little boxes. I didn't have that before. And that's all. That was just <laughs> basically the end result of what I wanted to accomplish, but I almost lost my entire system. If I didn't have the experience to know that when I went to this page, it was going to do. You know, if this guy had typed up these instructions or he didn't bother to do it, I wouldn't be able to recover. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Okay, so I've gone into a little bit of a diatribe as to why I think it's absolutely silly that people wouldn't put proprietary drivers in their Linux distributions. They should. Um, they're probably turning away at least a third of their target audience with that defect. Uh, it's ridiculous. Okay, now I'm going to go into SUSE, but I'll stop because I, I fear I'm going to overrun it.